y'all? It's your girl, V. Lee, and we're back with another episode of Split Image, where we bring hidden personas to the forefront. And today we're talking about motherhood, PTSD, life after a baby, and so much more. So make sure y'all stay tuned. Fellas, you can learn something. Ladies, know you are not alone, okay? But y'all, I got a very special guest today. Y'all, this is like my sister, Real. Go ahead and introduce yourself to the people. Let them know where they can find you. Okay, y'all. It's your girl, Real. You already know. Look, it also like a little, like a little promo. <laughs> <laughs> but no, you can find me on Instagram at all hell, A L L H A I L. Like hell, because your girl a queen. Okay. R E L L. Again, that's all hell underscore real. On um, Instagram. Yeah, what is TikTok? <laughs> I mean, it's it's too many apps around. Like for real, I just downloaded the app. What is it called? It's a it's a black owned app. I don't know what it is, but I and downloaded it. A lot more. Yeah, you, they finna be making a coin off there. Yeah, but girl, <laughs> it's been a couple of weeks. What you been up to? You done went? Well, both of us went in my yeah, we done. We what? be we be hitting, we be done. I know, <laughs> and every time I be like, I'm gonna come. I don't ever come to you when you you were supposed to come out. I know, and then but child, that baby downstairs, I be falling asleep sometimes. He fall asleep, I fall asleep, we fall asleep together. It's a team. So you ain't go out when that one night I was supposed to go out. Yeah, with you? No, I didn't go out. I was in the house for real, watching RuPaul Drag. <laughs> sure, I think she lying, y'all. I'm for real. You I ain't got a You ain't got a lie, Craig. Nah, she and my close friends. She was the one. But yeah, I miss you on your move though. I see you got your new lip gloss line. Oh yes, ma'am. The Royal Rebel Cosmetics dot com is where you can find it at. Royal Rebel Cosmetics. That's what you got on. Yeah. This, okay. This right here that I got on. This is your highness, because you know this is the queen of all queens. You know? Okay, yeah, I'm feeling it. You know, it'd be funny because um when we be out or whatever, guys be like, "What up, queen?" and I'd be like. Oh. Oh my God, here they go with this shit again. I know. What you been up to besides the lip gloss line? What else you got going on? Um, oh, I'm working on officially starting back a YouTube series. Okay. Okay. I don't know what I'm going to name it yet, though. That's crazy. That's the hard part. And I just talked about that in, a, in another podcast. I wrote the first two episodes out, but I'm still like, I don't know what to call it. Like, I don't know what to do. So I'm just like... I don't know. Then on top of that, trying to drop more poetry and stuff because I get fans in my DMs every day. Like, oh, so you just done writing poetry, huh? <laughs> no, you can't be. Y'all, she's a great screenwriter, all of that. Like, your girl got skills. Okay. Like, you got skills. So you can't sleep on yourself, no, ma'am. You gonna start the web series? And you I'm, gonna be, I'm gonna get my Maya Angelou on. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, no, no, no. What's the snaps? Yeah, I gotta. I always give it very much um, love, John. <laughs> <laughs> Love Jones. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so let me know when you start that because I'm definitely gonna be tuned in. Uh, what you talking about tuned in? You, you come. She's gonna be acting on the. In the series. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. I yeah. Because honestly, I love my fans and all, but I'm tired of skits. Yeah. I'm tired it's, of skits. I'm sick of it. Like, I would literally rather be on TikTok doing somebody else's sound and <laughs> to be doing the skits because I'm sick of it. Like, I really want to act for real. But that's the new reality. Like, it's like, okay, that's, it feel, that feel like 1990 or some shit. Yeah, I'm on a new wave. I want to do. That. I want that old, like. Give me back my acting skill. Give me back some lines. Let's get the whole camera crew back out. We don't, we don't got all that no more. So when you um when you do the series, like how long you trying to make it? Like thirty minutes, an hour? How you trying to do I'm it? I key wanted to make it fifteen minutes. Okay. Like I ain't wanted to be that long because like I feel like fifteen minutes and leave you like oh my god why why would she make this fifteen minutes right suspense. So I guess it kind of just depends on the flow because I also don't want to limit my creativity and just try to stick it into 15 minutes. And I like, oh, this episode should have been like this. But I'll probably do 15 to 20 minutes an episode because I feel like that's good. And then the finale. Uh, it's going to be a yeah, banger. Be, yeah. But you know, people attention span is like short nowadays anyway. So, so that's, that's perfect. Make that long. Yeah. Because if you realize when you're watching a TV show, is the show really not that long? They just add all them commercials, commercials, and, stuff and 
Especially Hulu. They get on my nerves. <laughs> <laughs> so I was looking at um like Martin the other day. The, the show really was like 18, 20 minutes at the most. And then no commercials, commercials. add on. Yes. And because by the time you trying to get into it, like when you look at it on the third party website and you play it through, it's like, okay, so it really was that long. TV made it feel long. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nah. So we're going to get into the nitty gritty now. Let's do it. <laughs> well, some of y'all don't know, but she has an eight month old baby. My nephew, Royal. Oh my God. <laughs> yes, I will baby see him anytime. You know, you have some kids, you be like, oh, fuck no, I ain't oh never. Come <laughs> on, get him right now. All they want to do is cry, cry, <laughs> cry. Like, no. But he is like the sweetest baby. <laughs> so I know for me, pregnancy was hard. So how was it for you? When you was pregnant? Um, it was different. I mean, I, it was like, okay, something is controlling my body that's not me. I wouldn't say it was. I think I really had an easy pregnancy, though. Like, besides the first uh, cup, like the first trimester mm-hmm. with that morning sickness, hated. it. See, I didn't, get, I didn't get morning sickness until, like, the middle. And then it just went away. But it was like... When I ate, I mean, when I drank orange juice and shit like that. No, I don't know what it was. I was just, I was messed up. But literally, as soon as the clock hit and I was out of my first trimester, I was fine. Smooth sailing like. Yeah, that, it, it's, it be real weird. It's so crazy. I don't understand that. And all I ate, <laughs> all I ate during my entire pregnancy was... Um, Taco Bell and <laughs> KFC. All I wanted to do was eat tacos and macaroni from KFC. That is so weird. See me, I, I was just eating a lot of stuff, but I was craving a lot of Chicago food because you know, you know, I'm from Chicago, if y'all know. And I was craving a lot of Chicago food, so I actually flew home a couple of times because I now, girl, you doing too much. I did like it was so good, and my people were sending me boxes of like high crunchy curls. And y'all, Chicago sh- she doing too much. <laughs> like I'm not going all the way back home for no for some food, real. You been you had some Chicago food? Um, so I've been to Chicago last year, and I think I just ate. We just ate like pizza. That's it. That's why you don't understand what I'm saying. While I was pregnant, I was craving them Italian beef, some hair rolls, some low. I was at gyro cheese. So burgers. so they can cook like that up there. Yes, because I'm from the yeah. south. <laughs> so I be like, when I eat down south food, and then when I go up north, I be like, damn, they can't cook. See. And that's how I feel about some restaurants down here because some restaurants down here think just because like you ever been to a place where it's like they like oh they going crazy about their macaroni and cheese like, oh, and that and shit it be nasty. a lot of cheese and there's no season no flavor no nothing it's just, it be nasty as hell it's just cheese it's just like <laughs> ugh. so it really like depending on what spots you go to like we got some good spots in Chicago so you gotta you know that's why. I'm, when tourists come, you know, people go to the touristy area and mm-hmm. stuff like that. Like, no. Yeah, if you know anywhere you go, the best food be in the hood. You know what's funny, though? <laughs> like, when we went to Chicago, um, I immediately, we took the train everywhere. If it was like, you on the train? Oh, hell no. No, like, I want to see real Chicago. And that's like what how I did when I went to um, Puerto Rico, too. We stayed in the hood. Yeah, we had to take a little intermission. Roya was down there going, ham. Life of a mom. You don't know That's why this podcast is perfect. The topic is perfect. Kids will, like, they'll be good one minute. It's all about them. It is. You don't get no life no more. Congratulations. Your life is official. <laughs> Controlled Not for, by a little human. For real, though. Like, you you literally have to eat, breathe, sleep when they do. Well, when they that young anyway, because I yeah. wish Kyle would. Throw a little bit right now. You'd be like, cop. Oh, yeah, and I try not to. I try not to whoop him. Um, you know, like the old school way to be like, "Oh, tear his ass up," blah blah. blah. I only whoop him when he goes to the extreme. Yeah. Other than that, it's like, okay, well, maybe we can I talk it out. About gym class, like what I used to hate doing in grammar school. So I'm like, I'm like, make Roy run suicide and squat. <laughs> oh, For his punishment, inches. I did have Kyle. Uh, doing some some suicides one day, man. He was crying so bad. I said, "Honey, oh, that's what your little badass get." And then they go remember that next time because, like, when I was younger and I used to get whoops and stuff, cause I ain't used to do too much, but I thought I was slick. So when I get caught for the stuff that I did, I'm like, okay, well, I, I, I be knowing in my head, like, okay, I'm just gonna get a whoop and I'm gonna cry, then it's gonna be over with. But see, that's the thing with kids. I think that's what's going <laughs> on with Kyle right now because it's like, okay, I whooped you. And then, what, you go back and do the same shit? That's why I'm thinking, like, 
Man, she was back in the day, and she would have told me, all right, go keep on running until I tell you to stop, and I'm still doing suicides out there while I'm squatting, holding the books all day. I'm, I'm probably not going to want to do that no more because I'm like, ooh, my body was hurt because now your body's <laughs> sore for the next couple of days. But you got some rebellious kids. Like, you would make them do all of that, and they'll still go back and do that same shit. You must like doing push-ups and suicide. Yeah, yeah it's, some, it's some way to get every kid. Every kid is different. You right, because um, yeah. with Kyle, it's like his cell phone. Because, Chad, I was emotional. I didn't get a lot of whoopings because just people yelling at me used to make me cry. I used to, I, girl, you a bucket of water? Girl! <laughs> Not you a bucket of water. I used to be sensitive. Girl. I'm sensitive. I'm a sensitive person. I'm a sensitive thug. For real. Oh, don't be the y'all be the most dangerous ones though. That's what I'm saying. Cause you could be crying while you shoot at a person. I can't stand you. <laughs> <laughs> you know what <laughs> speaking of emotional and we were just talking about pregnancy man i was so emotional through my pregnancy i cried so much i got sick of myself crying i see i was going through an emotional roller coaster but all for i can't necessarily blame it on just my pregnancy because i lost a lot of family members while i was pregnant mm. so so like it was just crazy like it all started with my my close friend he was like a brother to me and started with Sean and then like a couple months later then my blood cousin like one of my first cousins he was the the first real real close family member right. that I lost for real like he was only 25 at the time so right. yeah I lost him and then I went home for his funeral and my grandma died so yeah, I remember when your grandma died yeah I was just already on the roller coaster so I couldn't necessarily blame it on the pregnancy I feel like if it wasn't for my pregnancy, I probably would have stayed in my state of depression longer. So you feel like um, Royal brought some type of happiness, like yeah, it brought us. This is and then this is around the first time like he was starting like kick and stuff. Yeah, so I was like, you know that first kick feeling. It's like, come on, it's just, just kick me, but do it again, do it again. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's so exciting. Like I still got that was five years ago, and I still got videos in my phone. Like. Me recording my stomach because it looks so crazy. It's like, like, oh no, it's like the exorcist. <laughs> like, oh. But those are the most precious times, though. Like, you really feel one with your baby. Yeah. So I really felt like he was like my protector, though, because I wanted to, you know, break down a lot. But you know, I had him, and you gotta when you're pregnant, a lot of what you do in your body affects your child. So yeah, you right about that. To come out being an emotional roller coaster, either or you know, so I try to keep it up. So that's why right now I be having my days because now I can finally have my days without having to worry about mm -hmm. another person. When I used to go to my doctor's visits, they used to ask like, "How you feeling?" And this and that. And I used to be lying a lot of the times so. because I just didn't want them in my business because. I just used to feel like, okay, if I go and I tell them like how I really feel, the first thing they want to do is put you on medicine. It's like, what you going to do? What you really going to say? Like, you going to tell me, you know, one thing that I am probably going to try, I'm going to try counseling. I said I am. I, I'm, I am. I've been saying that for two years. Though. Black people, let's try counseling. <laughs> like, <laughs> this, we've been going through it since we've been going. But my thing is, I want a black counselor, though. That's what me and my sister were talking about. Because I just... No offense to the white people, but yeah, I no just, I, I don't, some, some things I just, they can't relate to us. Yeah. Like, you would just like, never know. Even if you're a woman, you can only relate to me on a woman time. But when it comes to me being a black woman, you know, you can't really relate to me. So, <laughs> so did you, did you have a woman doctor in your, pre, um, during your pregnancy or a man? Well, you, no, nah, I had, um, midwives. Cause remember I was originally supposed to do a water birth. Great. What made you decide? On? Well, I can't even knock it. So I had my I had my midwife saying. So I was going to see like it was like three of them, but they was mixing it up each time I went to my visit. But I I be seeing the same people basically. I be uncomfortable with a male doctor because I just feel like you trying to get a quick feel. You ain't got to be doing all that. Yeah, I'm asking women. It was all women. <laughs> I don't even think I saw. I think the only time I saw a male doctor. Was when I first found out I was pregnant, and I was trying to go see what was going on. Like she didn't know she was pregnant, girl. You know what you was doing I to get pregnant? I'm sick and everything, and they said I was pregnant. I said, "Take me to the hospital." I don't believe it. They lying. So you was in denial. Yes, I was. How because, you and then people play too much. They got all these fake pregnancy tests down here. I need to know the truth. Shit. First of all, <laughs> ain't no man gonna play like that. <laughs> <laughs> it be the other way around. The bitches be trying to trap the niggas. Yeah, but I ain't believe it. 
I still ain't want to believe it. He downstairs, and I still like, damn, he got it. That was my first reaction. Okay, so I took two tests. And then I did get it from the Dollar Tree. So that's why I took the second one because I was like, okay, maybe I was a faulty one. You know, my first reaction, I cried. I was like, oh, my life is over. Do you know how when the girls be running on Mari? <laughs> that's, that's how, how I ran out the room. <laughs> that's how I ran out the room. I did too as well. And I, on that first, I ran out the room to the other room. I locked myself in the bathroom. I said, uh uh-uh. uh. So then they said, come on, do the other, do the other. I ran, girl. After I beat on they like, Sherelle, you I ran. I ran. You ain't talking to me. Who? Oh. You know why I, why <laughs> I cried though? Because, okay, so I was, what, 22 when, when I found out I was pregnant. And for some reason, it just felt like your life is over. Like, you ain't going to be able to do nothing else. And then my granddaddy was in my head. I don't want to put him on blast. But my granddaddy was like, you need to have an abortion. And I was just so shocked that my granddaddy told me some shit like that. Like, People tell me that too. Have an abortion? But you know what? At the time, now that I'm sitting back realizing some stuff, I kind of understood what they were saying. I don't. But back then, I was going through a lot. And yeah, so yeah. Then I, I understood why they were saying it at first. Yeah. But the thing about it is, once I laid the, the ground, I'm like, I'm not doing it. I'm yeah, then they were cool I'm with it. This. Everybody jumped on the bandwagon. They was very supportive after that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I did have a time when I was like, am I ready for this? Am I ready with this person? Is this going to be this? Like, it's too much going on. I'm still young. Is this the person I'm... Yeah. You have to... What people don't realize is that you have to deal with this person that you have a child with for, for the, the rest, rest of your, your life. life. That whole, oh, until they 18, Ex- that's a lie, bro. Like, because my mom and my dad is still talking to each other today. Right. I know, I know y'all be talking about <laughs> They still do. <laughs> what was crazy is when I found out, and I was after I did the whole Maury scene, whatever, run around. I came. I'm back. just imagining her running through the house. I like. was for real. I can't make this up. <laughs> I was like, don't play with me. Um, catch me, y'all. Try to catch, catch me, me. outside. Oh, who child is that? Not mine. Like, <laughs> um, I had like this real strong gut feeling, like. Some bad stuff was finna happen, and I was gonna need my baby to get it to get me through it. You even talked to the two people that was there at this time. Well, one of them I don't talk to, but like my one friend, her name Xavier or whatever, and she was there, and I was like, I feel like I'm finna need my baby. Like I don't know where the feeling came from. But I was like, I'm Girl. gonna need him to get me through it. And then look, I I lost them three people back to back just like that, and I was like, it's crazy that I said it. And you know what was crazy? My grandma told me I was having a boy. Before I even knew. This was well before the gender reveal and everything. Damn. You know when people die in your family or people die in general, they, they it seemed like you always get a replacement. Because my, like my grandma, we found like she was like getting real sick because she had cancer for a minute. First she beat it and came back. It was just all crazy. And one day I was just in the house. One day my daddy called me and said, hey, uh, mama told me to call you and say you having a boy. I was like, what? Did Why you, she did you want a boy? I wanted a boy. See, I'm the opposite. I, I wanted a girl. I and I think I wanted a girl because um, Kyle's dad, he already had um, two boys. So I was like, okay, well, I want to I want to have the girl. And so when we went uh, for them to tell us what we were having, I, she was like, you ready? And then she told me, she was like, it's a boy. And I couldn't even be happy in the moment because I had to look over at him and make sure he was cool. And that's, that's now that I think about that, that's some weird shit. Like. It's I feel so crazy. Like we cannot be even to this time. We still worried about other people' happiness. Oh wow! So right? That's like how you? That's, that's what's crazy. Now that I think about it, I'm like, girl, you yeah. really was trying to decide whether you was happy that you was having a son or not. But I absolutely love my son now. But <laughs> yeah, oh, I love my baby. He is something else. And you know what's crazy? So I, I lost my grandfather when I was in sixth grade, but I was super close to him. But um, Roy was born. On a wedding anniversary. For real? Yes. That's a good anniversary thing because it's like, it's a it's his it's birthday, crazy. but it's a reminder yeah. of something bad that happened. But it's so, it's more good than bad because I promise I was in, I don't know if everybody believes in superstitions and all that other stuff or like the afterlife or all spirits and all this other stuff. But I do and I don't care if you don't believe what I believe. <laughs> I believe what I believe. I ain't know. If I um, start seeing some- <laughs> <laughs> But we're, I just it, obviously it got to be something else to this world. We on we in the middle, we right. like floating rock in the middle of nowhere. Come on now, like <laughs> anything is possible at this point. But I was in the hospital room when I was giving birth to him, basically, and I was like, 
I was going out of it. I was falling asleep. Like, you can ask me that every day. They was like, come on, bro. You got to get up. Like, ooh, this last push. I'm like, I don't know about this. I might have to go in and get them. Because like, <laughs> I didn't so, so you had true. Okay. See, I'm the opposite. I wish I was. Okay. So I was trying to um, give him, give birth to him natural. But he ended up coming a month early. I went to a doctor's <laughs> appointment. And she was like, no, you got to have the baby today. And I'm like, why? And so um, my placenta tore. Oh, okay. So I was went to the hospital. They induced my labor, and then like I don't know what happened, but out of nowhere she was like, "No, no, no, no. We we got to do a C section. Like we got to do a C section. His heart is dropping and all of that." And I I don't like C sections because this is what I I don't mm. feel comfortable with. So they took me to the operating room, and I'm like, "Okay, well, my mama coming. His dad finna come." They're like, "Oh no, nobody can be in the room with you." Mm. What the fuck do you mean nobody can I be in the room with me? Allowed at least one person in the room. No, nobody was allowed in the room, which That's I weird. think is weird to me, and I don't like because it's like I'm unconscious. I don't know what the fuck you doing to my body. Right. He came a month early too. Really, they told me I could have had my water birth if he would have just waited like two more days. Uh, he was like, "Fucking, I'm coming today." He, okay, on Father's Day, he broke my water <laughs> on Father's Day, and I said, "No, you didn't." I thought he carried you, but that was a good months. that was a good gift for his dad. Oh. Man, we was at the restaurant, and I was starting to get the pain. That is a different type of pain. I ain't never felt them type of contractions. Like people oh. say, it feel like real bad. Period. No, don't. It feels it worse. worse. Like, it I feel can't even worse. explain what it feel like. It, it's just. It, I wish men could feel that pain for real. It's not even like. I don't know how to explain it. Like that, it's feel like real bad period. No, I don't. No, I don't. It feel way worse than that. And you ready to be like, what in the world? So I was at my last, and I was running out of energy because that take that drain you. Like and then. When I got there, you know, originally I wanted the water bird, which is natural. But once I was feeling them, I'm like, can I get the drugs? Like, <laughs> it's too late. You're like at nine centimeters high. <laughs> when I got to the hospital, yeah, I got to the I'm hospital. I'm surprised you made it to the hospital. Yeah, because I was, my my water hadn't broke yet. But we oh. were sitting in the restaurant. And, and I was starting to, I said, can we just order our food to go? Because I. I'm just feeling real bad. I just want to go home and lay down. And he was like, you sure you want to go home or you want to go to the hospital? I'm like, no, we can go home. Girl, I got in that car, pulled out the parking lot, pulled right back in. I said, yeah, come on, let's go to the hospital. I'm on the side of the thing, crying, screaming, throwing up. Like, every time my contraction came, it made me throw up. This is crazy. Like, every time my contraction came, it made me throw up. So then we got there, whatever. I said, I got to pee. I went to the bathroom to go pee. Sat back down. They hooked me up, checking on him, make sure he good. Okay, cool. They they said I was dilated, but I was only at one centimeter, right? Mm -hmm. Then I got out. I was like, I need to use the bathroom. Yeah, I snapped myself. I stood up. And it just got the dripping down my leg. I said, well, I think that's him breaking the water because I'm pretty sure I didn't just pee on myself. It wasn't me. I feel like I was robbed of that experience. I didn't have none of that. Like, And then they talking about some, you feel a pop when it pop. I didn't. Maybe because I was too focused on going to go pee. <laughs> and it was just trickling. It was just warm. Check it out. I'm just looking like. What the hell I is think going this, on? I think it did what it needed to do. And, <laughs> and tested it right. So, man, you. By the next time the lady came to come check me, I was at nine centimeters dilated. I was so mad. That's so I'm like, oh, so I can't get the drug. <laughs> I'm the opposite. The I didn't even want no drugs. Even after, girl, I was in so much pain. And they were trying to like, they were like, take the medicine, take the medicine. It was like this button that you press for the medicine. I'm like, I don't want it. Like, I, I just. I, I wanted know. it, but I couldn't get it because everything moved so fast. And I didn't want it at first. But every time the contracts hit and they got stronger, I was, was like, like where is that? Where is that fiending for? Please help me, please. <laughs> I was crying. I'm like, come on. Well, you know what's crazy? Throughout my whole birth, I didn't even cry. Like, I, I went, but not once he'll ask him. Ask, ask him did. I don't believe that one now. I didn't cry. I went the whole girl. Night. I was in there boohooing. Like, I didn't, not once he'll drop down my head. Before they did the C section. I was crying because like, they was like, um, we're going to have to give you anesthesia. And that was my first time having anesthesia, like, ever. I never had surgery or nothing in my life. <laughs> Girl, I was like, I'm not going to wake up. They was like, yes, you are. How the fuck you know? Right, because you God. <laughs> my whole family was on the phone, though, when I was, like, that, them people, my family. Oh, because this so, was COVID. Yeah. My, shit is so weird so now. so family oriented. Like, they stood on the phone. They was on the phone the whole time. On this phone was my family. On his phone was his family. Because I'm close to his family too. So, like, we he holding both phones. This fool got them in between my legs. <laughs> and I'm like, the baby coming. I'm like, they like, come on, we need to But, like, 
literally then like like this is what I was saying about my spiritual um sad um, I was like at the point where I was just like those not I was gonna go to sleep and take a nap and I was just like grandma please can you just help me please like I was begging and pleading for her to come help me I swear like my grandma I spent a lot of time around her because mm -hmm. you know my parents was young and stuff so you right. know they still want to be young and yeah. stuff like that but I was very close to my grandparents um so really when she passed I feel like I lost a mother. I ain't gonna say I lost my mama. Right. I feel like I lost a mother. You know. An extra mom. Um, yeah, because that was my that was my girl. But um, I'm like, please. And why I tell you, the light started flicking, and the lady looking out the window. She was like, "Bitch, I would have been up out of there if I was no, that lady." Girl, I was happy. No, I'm not. I'm talking about if I was that. Oh, her, oh yeah. Cause she ain't know what's going on. I'm, I'm assuming my spiritual side. But she was like, she's like, that's weird. Why are the lights flicking and stuff? It's not even raining or no storm is coming outside. And I and mm -hmm. I tell you, I said, can you please send grandma? And I'm like, started flicking. I don't know where that energy came from because it wasn't me. And it was like something just pushed him right out. And I was just like, who? Well, but did the lady hear you saying it? Like, help me, grandma. Everybody heard me saying it. Ch I was yelling. Let me tell you, I don't <laughs> I play yelling. like that. I would have been. Up and through that, I would have tell up through that so fast, but you ain't gonna have to play with me like me. Cause for real, cause I'm just like, help me please. Cause I was at the point, I'm just like, dang. Cause it feel like you taking a big ass shit. <laughs> you out. Just, nobody ain't tell me that. That's what nobody told me. Everybody told me, okay, it's it's gonna be painful. Everybody experienced it. Nobody told me it felt like he was coming out of my ass. <laughs> That's what it felt like. I was taking a shit and I couldn't push him out, and I was so upset. I'm like, oh, oh. So that's why man, you were I'm waiting. I kept going back and forth to the bathroom. They was like, okay, um, you're in nine centimeters now, so I know you're comfortable sitting on the toilet. Because for some reason, <laughs> the most comfortable places they try to give me the bouncing ball. Hey, you ain't and feeling the it. The most comfortable places me sitting on the toilet. <laughs> I was sitting on the toilet, slumped. Like, oh my god, I didn't have to pee nothing, but I just kept going on sitting on the toilet. That's what felt. She was like, "If you feel the urge, you know that you have to poop. Do not push, cause you're gonna push your baby in the toilet." I'm like, "Oh, damn. Well, come get him out there. Let me. She gonna tell me. Let me know when you ready to push. Girl, you I don't even feel, know. I'm ready yeah. right now. Let's go. So, how was it when y'all when you when y'all got home? Because I came home. It was just me and him. So I was very, very, very distraught when I came home. Imagine right he came what was that the week after the baby shower so my all of my family had already been down there the week before they had already set up his room his his aunties and stuff like they already set up his room everything well, was, at least you uh, had a support system yeah like yeah. that's what I can say even though they out of, out, um, out of state and stuff my family to this day they still a dope support system like you know um they be flying back in or i'll be flying roy out there and they want to keep him for some time so it's it's definitely but let me see the first person that came down because obviously his dad was with me when we got there it was kind of weird for me because it was like i got this little human you know like i left yeah. it was just us now is coming back and it's like it's this little human and it was it was crazy and it, that crying oh he was getting my nerves a little bit. <laughs> he gonna sleep please. it was killing because I wanted to just go to sleep and I'm like can you please just let me go to but sleep. a lot of people don't realize like when you come home after that birth you are exhausted yes. and it's like especially if you breastfeeding and stuff like I tried to breastfeed I, I tried I but um he wouldn't latch on so but that just drains you. And it's like, damn, come on. And he wasn't drinking fast enough for me. <laughs> I know I ain't got no titties now. But when I had him, them things was huge. And when you got your, your breast full of milk, it's like, that shit hurt. Filled up, it hurt. It hurt. Ooh, and then it just started getting too filled. It started feeling like rocks. Your nipples started tingling. And you like, somebody give me a breast pump or something. Hey, baby, come drink this titty. Uh, <laughs> please hurry up, hurry up. Like, but I feel like. I don't think I should have breastfed because this thing, like, the time he did, it made my damn titties sag a little bit. And I ain't got no titties, and I feel like my shit is just sagging. So now I got to go get me a little breast lift, a mommy lift. Child, it's just so ghetto. You know what I mean? just, <laughs> The things we have to go through. It's crazy. But then right after that, my dad came down. Well, it was times when his dad would take him out the room and be like, just go to sleep. And I'd be like, them the times you real think I was so. like, okay, I really appreciate that. Like, cause we, they never went to Royal Room to go to sleep or nothing though. <laughs> They'd go upstairs to the little loft area and put a little mattress down. I don't understand that, but. That, right. That cause you could just go put them in his bed or yeah. something. So I'm just, and I used to like, give me some sleep and I used to be like, oh yes, Lord. Cause that's, it's draining. Like, get up, change baby diaper. 
make some bottles. And even if you breastfeeding, you have to breastfeeding is the whole thing because whatever the baby don't drink, you still gotta pump it out. Mm-hmm. It's in there and mm-hmm. it hurt. Yeah. I'ma just be real. So when Kyle was born, like that that first month or two, girl, I was going through it, like had post-traumatic stress, all of that shit. Like, and it I used to feel so bad, like after I got over PTSD. But when I was going through it, I couldn't even understand why I didn't want to hold my baby, why I didn't want to look at him. Like, it was time. I was like, damn, what, what is really going on here? I think mine was really, like, more so with myself. Like, it took me a while to go outside again. Like, I'm like, yeah. part of me, like, I don't want to go outside because I'm going to be with my baby and I don't want to feel bad for leaving him. And what it is. Yeah, because you do feel, you feel guilt. Like, yeah, like just trying oh, to enjoy it. Okay? Or when you out, you like, what are you doing? Send me a picture. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, hold on. Let me hear his voice. Did you do this? Everybody like, just go outside and have a good Like, my mom came here and forced me to go outside. Like, she flew like, <laughs> give me the baby. Go outside. Y'all go have a date night or something. Or you go, go somewhere with your friends or something. Yeah. And that was just like, okay. And then it was hard because... Now, when you go, when you pregnant and stuff, going through pregnancy is an experience. You got your body type that you was before you pregnant, and your body you type when you pregnant, mm-hmm. your body type after you pregnant. So now I'm going through my clothes, trying on clothes. So I go outside. I'm like, I can't fit nothing. Shit, this don't look shit. right. I don't want to go outside. I don't look good. Like, uh, like I lost you know, hella weight when I was pregnant. Me too. So it's like oh, after girl. People swear I was on drugs. Like, I would go home and people were like, You all right? Like, my dad, he was like, Don't you lose no more weight. And I'm like, And they act like you want to do it on purpose. It's stress. Uh, people used to ask me, How you losing weight? Baby, it's stress. If you want to lose weight, go stress yourself out. I've been trying to get my weight back. So, if y'all got some weight gain, <laughs> let us know. Try. Yep. yep, it's 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 just crazy and it's different and it's just like you gotta find your confidence again. You gotta make yourself mm-hmm. feel beautiful again. Like it's just a whole thing. So at first, I didn't even know I was going through, going through PTSD for real until like I I realized like oh I'm I'm upset about this. I don't know why I'm mad, but I'm mad now. I'm hurt, yeah, now I'm sad. yeah. Like, now I'm happy. I'm cool. Never mind. I'm mad again. Like then for real, like if you in a relationship and stuff, or if you with a person or whatever, you get to thinking like I wonder if this person still see me the same way. Or right, like, I mean, right. That was just going crazy. Like, oh, I wonder he don't want to. He want to go outside with his friends or whatever. Why he don't? He don't look no more. I don't look the same no more. Like, so you know what's crazy. what's weird for me? Okay, so me and Kyle's dad split up during my pregnancy, and of course, I waited a couple of months or whatever before I didn't go looking for a new relationship. But I ended up getting into a new a new relationship. So I kind I was I had that on my mind too. I'm like, damn. Is he still going to like me after I have the baby? Like, because it's not his baby. Like, that shit was so weird. And I was just, I just had all type of emotions. I'm like, damn. It's definitely a process that you go through. Like, pregnancy is, it ain't easy. Like, mentally, and you got to be mentally strong Mm -hmm. for it, for real. Because that PT, you could be stuck in depression, for real. And don't even know. It's just a sneak up on you. I was. It is just sneak up on you. It was like, I just couldn't be happy for no, like, I I tried to be happy. Like, honestly, I'd be my son. I'd be like, I'm so happy. I'm so this. And then I'd be sad again for some reason. I don't know why. So, I had a miscarriage. Mm. And... Even though it was like an early miscarriage, like a six week mis- miscarriage, I was still attached to the baby. I don't know how or why, but I was so depressed after that miscarriage. I was like, damn. It was like, still a part of you. It was, but it wasn't. I don't In know. a sense. And it I never knew what that felt like. Like people would say, um, oh, they had a miscarriage or whatever. And I was like, oh, I'm sorry to hear that. But to actually go through it, I was like, damn. I understand now. Well, I haven't had that experience, so I can't really speak on that. But I hope I, I never go through it again. I hope I don't have to because I feel like that would be sad. Because then you'd be like, damn, man. The women that be having miscarriages be wanting the babies, and then the ones that can get pregnant on the drop of a dime, they be trying to get rid of them. They said they're going to be dead. <laughs> they show up like it's they, they, uh, they, they check us. <laughs> Child. People have, everybody got a reason for why they do what they do. But just stop playing with these kids because you know what you're doing out here. Like, just, just wrap it up. If it ain't what you're trying to do, y'all study going to this end. Anybody who don't know, I used to work on MLK. And I used to see the weirdest shit on MLK. Like, it used to be. I know you did. 
Girl, it used to be some crackheads like they be pregnant. And I'm like, first of all, I don't even want to know why or who fucked you. But you just get to thinking about where is the child going to go? Right. Girl, I used to be like really trying to figure this shit out. Like, okay, she pregnant. I was like, what's, where the baby going to go? Like, that baby going to go into foster care, child care? If, if they don't sell the baby for something, for some drugs or something. That's what I be thinking. That's so like, scary. You know, Atlanta is like one of the top places for, you know, sex trafficking and stuff. It, so, it damn sure is. Just, like, I just, I'm thankful that, you know, hopefully I will never have to experience it. Like, being in the sex ring, because I don't know what I will do. Well, I'll tell you one thing. A motherfucker trying to, they're going to be sending my ass back. I don't know, though, because it's some crazy people. I think I'm crazy, but it, it's some really local people out here. So, I ain't even going to say that. It's sick. And then it just be like, mm, no. <laughs> that remind me of the movie that I ain't going to speak on. Her movie that she wrote. Girl, no. Because now I'm upset. <laughs> because do you know to this day, I've reached out to that man like, you going to ever send me my heart? <laughs> but the thing is, the good thing about it is. That I did get insurance on it, so nobody can steal it. Like the, the I've been got my um my certificate and stuff from Adam oh and okay all of that stuff or the Writers Guild of America, so nobody can steal the script or nothing. So even if it's similar to, it, I can sue them. Get some advice for her because I know hella people that done yeah. got their work taken before it even got handed out to the cast. I already had my certificate and my own the rights to it. So okay. You know, don't hand nothing out until you know it's yours because somebody <laughs> will take it and make it theirs for real. But yeah, she what? had that. The movie was about sex trafficking, so that's why I brought that up. And I and I just asked my uncle literally crazy two days ago, like, um, can you reach out to dude because he never sent my stuff back. Like this is around the time I had an editor. He was working on BT too, and I was just like, he was supposed to send it back, and but. I understood BT came first. They was paying them more coins. To a certain extent, because but, the small people can get you, they they get you some coins too now. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? But I ain't never get it back. So now I'm, I'm happy you just said that again. <laughs> now you about to go reach out to them. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Where my shit at? It's been years later to steal <laughs> I know you ain't still working on the BT shit. <laughs> it's over with. But my professor from my college, so I went to Clark Atlanta University, you know, HBC. Okay. You know? Um, graduated, gotta say that. Damn, um, I went to a, I went to a PWI. It's okay, you went. Yeah. Win. What you was saying? Basically, I had um, he got me in this this little deal where I wrote a script for some people who bought my script, and then it got picked up by Amazon. So it's supposed to be coming out on Amazon. Okay. Like, next month. That's what's up. So I'm waiting for that. She stay working. Listen, even when people don't know, I be up to stuff, and I don't brag about it because I really you don't care. But you gotta stay low key because you never know who praying against you. Yeah, they be fake. Hey, they be like, no, <laughs> okay, they be real. They be fake loving. Mm hmm. Man, it's been an interesting podcast, and I hope you you better keep it up because this is what you wanted to do. She she want to brag on other people. She don't brag on herself enough. Okay, because my girl do her thing. I had she be out here acting. <laughs> she be out here driving truck. I don't know how she do it. I rode her one time driving in that truck. <laughs> I was kidding. And she was pregnant. I was pregnant. Yo, too. yo. But she. I don't know how you did it because I used to get motion sickness. Yeah, I ain't getting none of that. Child, I was on jet skis pregnant. I was doing all that stuff. That was it. Oh, she That's living on, on, she living on the wild side. It was before I got a gig, though. So, I, I was living on the wild side. <laughs> this girl was backing it up. Backing that truck up. Whipping it. Hey, like, girl, you look good. Won't you back that ass girl, up? Okay, serial <laughs> entrepreneur. Don't play with her. So I'm. I know y'all gonna stay tuned to this podcast because she, my girl, we have stuff to talk about. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up with the episode. Okay. Thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. Thank you for the one. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead and let the people know where they can um, follow you again. Okay. Make sure y'all follow me on social media at all hell underscore real. That's A L L H A I L underscore real. And Facebook, my fan page is Sherelle versus Ebony. And if you're paying attention to the podcast, you'll know why soon. <laughs> okay. Period. And, of course, I am your host, V. Lee. Make sure y'all continue to tune in. New episodes dropping every Thursday. And until next time, it's been real.